Matthew 25, 31 through 33. Now this is the story of uh, the servants given talons. And he just explained what happened to the unrighteous servant. Now he's explaining the parable in its entirety. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will be seated on the throne of his glory. Now, it's debated whether judgment will happen after you die or there's a soul sleep to go to judgment. I think, honestly, it's eternity. So as we die, we into eternity. Because we think of eternity as it starts here and goes on forever. But eternity doesn't have a start. So it's we're there. We're already get, We'll go to the, the judgment, and then everybody, people that are here on earth, will be there because yeah, it's you know, eternity. It's time, time. Yeah, it's outside our time, time focus. Yeah. So while we may look at it on the earthly as soul sleep, and it may be explained that way so we can comprehend it, it's on a level of understanding that we can't truly get. So what it amounts to is the Lord's going to come back. Because he's coming back as a king. I heard some preaching the other day where he rode into Jerusalem on Passover on a donkey. Kings rode on a donkey to symbolize coming in peace. But they rode on a horse to symbolize going to war. Jesus is returning on a horse. So he's coming back to take his land. And when he does, his angels are going to be with him to take it. And nobody's going to really put up a fight. He's going to give out the word, and they're going to be ultimately judged then, the ones that are here against him. So, but those that have died are going to go before his throne to get judged. And those that have him, he's going to allow us to come into his company because he knows us. And those that don't, they're going to be cast out. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one another as a shepherd parts the sheep from the goats now most fields they most had different cattle but the sheep and goats could live together they ain't they won't attack each other or anything and sheep usually just eat grass goats will just be to eat about anything though it shows that he's our shepherd we're sheep we live more particularly than him. The goats, they just go about doing anything. Not really. The sheep will follow the shepherds. The goats just go about. So the there's this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a distinction. The distinction that he's using here is good because the sheep won't go anywhere <laughs> unless the shepherd leads them usually. Um, the goats just wander about and they're kind of hard to put where you want them after. They are, because they're going about their own way. So, and the sh goats don't always follow, don't follow the shepherd. They might just because they're going that way anyway. It might it might resemble following the shepherd, but not really no following is being done there. And goats are easier to survive out there because they go on anything. While being a Christian, we're more prone to being attacked and by this world so sheep only go for the certain grass they eat they can't eat anything like goats so we're more particular of how we should live and that's following the shepherd and he will place the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left now right hand oftentimes most people are right-handed right hand Symbolize the place of authority, place of power, place of respect. We're, we, as Christians, because we have him, we're going to be in a place of honor, a place of glory. And those that reject him, they're going to be on the left, which is just outside his power, outside his glory. Ultimately, hell, what makes it bad is the absence of God, the absence of anything good. The absence of hope. These are the things that make hell bad. There is no chance of good because God's never there. 
It's uh, ultimately being for, cho- being given what you choose, which is you choose not to have Christ, nothing to do with him. And it's ultimately living with that decision for eternity. 